The fact that these are meant to be jokes shows how bad the left is doing right now. She won't just protect Plan B. She is Plan B. Harris would be the first woman president, first black woman president, and first Asian president. But I don't vote for who will be the first. I vote for who will win. And for whatever reason, Harris has never been popular. You can count the number of delegates she won in the 2020 primaries on one hand, as long as that hand has no fingers. <laughs> in three years as vice president, she's been quieter than an electric car. Sometimes life isn't fair. It's not fair that she's not popular. She's intelligent and accomplished, and in fact, was put in charge of the border. And look at how, okay, bad example. <laughs> Elon Musk is doing more than just donating $45 million a month to Donald Trump. He just put out this video on Kamala Harris, who looks like she's going to be the new nominee for the Democratic Party. But you got to check this out. It is amazing. Let's take a look. Oh, and by the way, if this is your first time on the channel, my name is Noel, battling MS. And go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. So we'll get the word out to more and more people. Let's go. I, Kamal Harris, am your Democrat candidate for president because Joe Biden finally exposed his senility in the debate. Thanks, Joe. I was selected because I am the ultimate diversity hire. I'm both a woman and a person of color. So if you criticize anything I say, you're both sexist and racist. There's got to be AI because I know she would never say anything like this. But this is funny. She just being honest or AI is being honest. I may not know the first thing about running the country, but remember, nope. that's a good thing if you're a deep state puppet. I had four years under the tutelage of the ultimate deep state puppet, a wonderful mentor, Joe Biden. Joe taught me rule number one, carefully hide your total incompetence. I take in significant things and I discuss them as if they're significant. And I believe that exploring the significance of the insignificant is in itself significant. What a word salad. I mean, you got to really think about what she just said and try to put two and two together. But that's just her style. Get you to stop and think, what the hell is she saying? Talking about the significance of the passage of time, right? The significance of the passage of time. So when you think about it, there is great significance to the passage of time. And there is such great significance to the passage of time. Another trick is trying to sell. Imagine her going to debate Donald Trump. And Donald Trump is going to be standing next to her saying, I have no clue what she just said. And I don't think she does either because she really has no clue what the hell she's saying. Somebody told her, say this. You're going to sound great. And nobody's going to check you on it. And it's going to work. And she believed it. It's crazy. Sound black. I pretend to celebrate Kwanzaa. And in my speeches, I always do my best Barack Obama impression. So hear me when I say, I know Donald Trump's tight. And okay, look, maybe my work addressing the root causes of the border crisis were catastrophic, but my knowledge of international politics is truly shocking. The United States shares a very important relationship, which is an alliance with the Republic of North Korea. It is North Korea. We don't even talk to North Korea. She meant to say South Korea because seriously, she made that mistake. And I heard it when she said it live. And we don't even deal with North Korea. It's sad that she doesn't even know that. It is an alliance that is strong and enduring. And just remember when voting this November, it is important to see what can be unburdened by what has been. And by what has been, I mean, Joe Biden. Do you think the country went to sh over the past four years? You ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> and you know what's funny that Donald Trump hasn't given her a nickname yet. You know, so he might go with cackling Kamara, Kamala Harris or I don't know, dumbass Kamala Harris. But comment down below. What do you think is going to be the nickname that he uses when talking about Kamala? Because Donald Trump is a genius when it comes to giving people a nickname. And he does that to everybody. But my man Elon Musk just said, this is amazing. That video got 121 million views. Because it is that, that funny. It is a little bit sad too, because at the same time, that is who she is. She's a person with no content. And if somebody told her to say these great things which are not great, and she keeps repeating them over and over again, trying to sound smart. 
Because at the end of the day, smart people are really smart. They just don't sound smart. You know, so she's confusing the two. And at the same time, she's calling voters dumb. And we're going to believe this. This is insane. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, my name is Noel, Battling MS. If you like this clip, go ahead and give this a thumbs up so we go spread the word and send this out to more and more people. Um, I'm over here doing my side of things and try to keep you guys entertained with different content. In this video, we're going to take a look at Kamala Harris. I also wanted to take a look at what's going on in the Olympics in France. It's insane. I mean, take a look at this. The difference between the Russian Olympics and the France Olympics. It is crazy. Here's a video showing the Russian Olympics and versus the French Olympics. What do you notice? I'm gonna take the audio off because I don't wanna get, let me make this a little bigger. All right, so in taking a look at both Russia Olympics 2014, and France Olympics at the bottom. I mean, just looking at the video, the top one looks beautiful, right? Men and women dancing, enjoying life, you know, trying to do some choreography, doing their best. It looks amazing. The bottom one, I got to say, it looks sat satanic. Like all hell break loose. Look at that. You got a talking head. She's holding a head that's talking by her wayside. I mean, look at this. Look at these individuals. What is Olympic, Olympic about them, right? When I think of Olympics, I'm thinking sports. Any athletic sports. These people are just making fun of the Christianity, of the Christian religion no sports whatsoever so they try to normalize like this is the norm wow we're living in some crazy time let me replay this because go woke and go broke look at the bottom one it is scary the only thing you could say that it's evil. And that's something people don't want to say it, but it is. Look at the top one. Like whatever happened to the, we say that the top one is beautiful and it looks beautiful. It looks like a bunch of healthy people who are probably in the Olympics and they're doing this great choreographer dance, choreographed dance. While the bottom one is celebrating hell. Like we all gonna die. Welcome to hell. Oh my god. The difference is obvious. So it's like, what are we trying to say? Are we trying to step away from 2014? We're trying to get away from the norm? From what looks good? Man, we live in a crazy time. But... Yeah, the bottom video, the French Olympics went woke. And I hope people start just going up against it. Because it is some scary, scary views. But that's what's going on with um, 2024 Olympics. And that's why we need Trump back into office. Because these are some scary times. <sighs> Woo! And somebody just got to say it. They got to call it out. It's satanic. Why we got a, a man dressed like a woman rocking a beard? It's not funny. Not cute. We're not in Halloween. And look at that. A girl with a hat, with no head, carrying her own head, talking by her wayside. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> They're making like Halloween all year round. 
Look at Cardi B. Cardi B got problems. All right, I think we're going to end there. The Olympics laser show is amazing. So says Elon Musk. All right, last thing that I wanted to play for you guys is Andrew Schultz. Giving a shout out to Kamala Harris. Let's see what he says about it. Well, the show actually became funny over time. But you know what? I'll say this much before I play in the video. Andrew, Sh and Andrew Schultz, great comedian, but he knows better than to go against the left. Like, he's a Democrat no matter what. And he can't say, uh, I'm a Trump supporter or I'm a Republican now. So he does everything but say that he supports Trump, right? So it's kind of indirect support of Trump. Just not saying it directly because he's making money right now with the left. So therefore, let's just say all the bad things with the Democratic Party. Take a look. Kamala is in. The election went from drool runnings to cool runnings faster than a female cop can fumble her firearm. Move over, RFK. This November, we've got a new throat goat, and apparently her headshots don't miss. Kamala Harris, or as we call her, War Hawk Tua, the half black, half Indian parents met at a 7 Eleven robbery, is officially <laughs> the Democratic nominee. Surely the Dems, the party that calls Trump the end of democracy, surely they allowed the voters to choose Kamala, right? What? No? Wait, there's no right to choose? Guys, this is a presidential election, not a woman's body in Oklahoma. Now, I don't want to seem like a flat earthing, dinosaur denying, believe all women conspiracy theorist, but it kind of feels like the Democrats dragged Biden's lifeless corpse through the campaign long enough to avoid a primary so they could place whoever they wanted as the nominee. And that's so indirectly he's pointing out how bad the Democratic are working this thing, just taking out the the nominee and putting in Kamala, which is a big, big problem. It's about as democratic as North Korea's got talent. Sidebar, last year's winner, Ching Chong Chestnut, <laughs> 846 rats. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Ching Chong. That's a lot of rats. We'll look forward to seeing how many you eat next year. <laughs> what I'm saying is they used a vegetable to install a plant. And honestly, we would have been happier with a fruit. But the reality is it doesn't matter. Last week, Trump became invincible. Literally, he was leading before and now he's number one with a bullet. At this point, if the Dems wanted to beat Thrifty Scent, they'd have to run George Washington and Kamala could work for him. Paid. Paid. Hmm. Now, why is Trump invincible? Because he has the power of Hulkamania, obviously, brother with a hard R. And also because this pimple lipped, pug faced incel, we'll call him a trench bulldog, tried to make Trump's brain public domain. Fortunately, even a bullet couldn't make Donald open minded. Now, getting a shot off at the president must be an incredibly difficult thing to accomplish. I mean, not as difficult as finding binoculars to fit his eyes. Jesus, he looks like the sloth from Ice Age, but he must have designed a pretty ingenious plot to serve circumvent the secret service and the oh what's that wait you're saying that herpy potter was just walking around with a loaded gun like he was on an alec baldwin set he was carrying a fucking ladder and a rangefinder. he propped it up on a building that had cops in it positioned himself on the roof with a perfect sight line to the president and no one did anything this mickey mouse security detail was so goofy it made donald duck oh boy <laughs> <laughs> who's in charge of the secret service a lady wait <laughs> what seriously well, of course, she didn't have anyone on top of the building. Women only care about shots on a roof when there's a pool party. Now, I don't want to seem like a Bigfoot tracking, moon landing, denying Jews don't control the weather conspiracy <laughs> theorist, but it doesn't exactly feel like a 20-year-old fetal alcohol face McLovin should be able to infiltrate the most advanced security detail in history. I mean, the only other thing he's penetrated was his palm. Did Kim Cheadle hire Epstein's NyQuil night watch? What the fuck is going on here? This just doesn't feel right. And that's the problem. Nothing feels right. We have officially entered the post-truth age. We can't trust the media. We can't trust the government. We can't trust the pharmaceutical industry. We can't even trust the food we eat. So who can you trust? Me, your good friend, Chelsea. This episode has been brought to you by Pfizer. There is no promo code. There's nothing to fill out. They're already inside you. But before we bitch, whine, and complain, just remember, 
like it or not, this is what we asked for. We wanted fast content that makes us feel good. We want politicians who lie to us. We want sugary food to fill us up and pills to slim us down. We don't want what's good for us. We want what's convenient. So we made our bed. Might as well get comfy. Sleep tight. We are now, you see, he says a lot, but the only thing he never says is Trump 2024. That's, the, that's how you should end that right there, that speech, that conversation. Because we are being tricked and people got to wake up to what the tricks that the Dems are doing to get their candidate in and to paint a new picture of who Kamala Harris is. But we know what's going on. We could see it. And Andrew Schultz, he sort of want to say it, but he doesn't come out and just say Trump 2024. The man dodged a bullet. And he's going to be winning in a landslide. So in order to keep his audience, he just said a whole bunch of stuff in positive things about Trump, but just never ends with Trump 2024. And I think that's for all entertainers making money. You know, you want to stay even keel. You don't want to talk bad about the Dems. You don't want to talk bad about the Republicans. Same with Joe. Joe Rogan doesn't um, support anybody. Right, they do point out what's bad or what's wrong or what we should notice that's happening, but they never support anybody. So with that said, Trump 2024, that's who got my support. We need that man to fix this country with all the satanic things happening in France and in the Western world, like the Russians say. And if you like this content, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. We're trying to make a, a channel here. My name is Noel. I'm battling a mess in retirement to try to make use of my final days before I'm bedridden. It is what it is. Peace. Verbal. Earn rice. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm.